All right, today we are making a slow cooker to go in the doll's dollhouse kitchen. Stay tuned and see how quick and easy this project is. All right, so our first step is to make the body of our slow cooker. And to do that, I did a little prep work off camera. I've got a three quarter inch dowel. It's actually a handle to something. I purchased this at Dollar Tree. It's a toilet plunger handle. I purchased it specifically to use as a dowel because for a dollar, you get a good three quarter inch dowel. And that's what you need. You need a three quarter inch dowel. And I've wrapped it with some parchment paper to give myself a non-stick area on here. I also cut two pieces of cardstock. This guy here is just plain white and it's the length of a paper which means 11 inches by 5 eighths of an inch. The measurements will be in the blog post. And I wanted to make my slow cooker I have a decorative outside. So I've got this. This is some card making paper cardstock. I know this paper pack is not available anymore. I've had this for probably uh, seven, eight years. But pick one that you like. I wanted to do something in a blue in the blues to go in the beachside bungalow. So I picked this. Pick a small floral. Pick look online at crock pots. Or you could just use a plain color. If you don't want a decorative outside, you need at least 11 inch strip. Having the extra six inch strip is just going to make your crock your slow cooker a little bit bigger around and more in scale. So it's optional to use this strip. So I am going to start by taking my scissors and on the back I'm just going to do this. This is going to give me a little bit of a curve. It's going to tell the paper, hey, you need to curl just like you do with curling ribbon. Alright, now I've got my dowel here. Pick this one up first because I just did and roll it around. That way it's it's all ready to roll now. Now this one we are going to roll around and we're going to hold it here for just a second after we do. This roll doesn't have to be neat. Once you put glue on it you're going to have to be neat. Alright, now we know that this can roll up. I'm going to unroll and make a mark right about where the two, this end meets here. I don't want glue on this part on the inside. I am going to put glue on the outside of this area but from here up I want glue on the inside. I have a piece of parchment paper here and I have tacky glue. You need a thick glue. I don't like Mod Podge for this application because Mod Podge tends to buckle your paper because of the high water content. Um, I almost pulled out the wallpaper paste that I have left over from the Beachside Bungalow, but I know not everybody has access to that. If they're not actually building a dollhouse, they wouldn't have that. So I wanted to do something that would be easier for everybody to have. If you have a glue stick that works well, you can use that. The glue stick I currently have, for whatever reason, is working right up until the glue dries and then it lets go. It just comes completely unglued. So I need to toss that one, get that glue on the inside, and get myself a new glue stick. Now, I want to have, on the, just on the end, we need to have some glue just to make sure that that is going to make a good connection my parchment paper off where I won't get it on anything else and now start with that piece that has glue on the outside and you want to make sure that you are being nice and neat I'm trying to keep this in camera this is actually the second time I've recorded this in actuality I actually have the slow cooker finished but I went to review my video my footage just last night and I had totally done this entire step off camera. Never did get back under camera doing this. So since this is a very important step, I'm making an extra slow cooker. 
I may or may not finish this one. I haven't decided. Now I am trying to take some care here while watching that I'm under camera to keep these lined up pretty straight. You will have an easier time because you're not glancing up from time to time to see if you're under camera. That's usually where I go wrong. Okay. This is nice. I want to make sure I have glue underneath that very end. You want the end to be nicely secured. Now where this ended, we're going to take this piece, I'm going to butt it right up against because if we overlap it, it's going to make extra bulk. And we don't want a lump. We want to have a nice smooth finish on our ends. You want it nice and tight. The tighter you roll this, the better the end result is going to be. Um, on camera I can't get it quite as tight as I would if I wasn't on camera because if I wasn't on camera I could get it up where I could really see it. Alright, now this just needs to dry and we can go on with the next step in our slow cooker. Alright, now that our glue has had some time to get dry we are going to first put the bottom on our slow cooker. I got it fairly straight. So what I've got here is just another, just a little square of the same white paper I used to start this with. I'm going to put it nice. And you don't need to measure that yet. Just make it bigger than your, than your uh, slow cooker. Because we're going to glue this on. And then we are going to let it dry. And then trim around it makes it so much easier. And I'm being pretty generous with my glue here. All right. We're just going to stick it on there. And we're going to put that off to the side. All right, now we're going to make the lid for our slow cooker. And to do that, we're going to start with the rim and for that, I have this wire. This is that 12 gauge floral wire that's really soft that you get at Dollar Tree. Um, if you don't have this, any other soft, really bendable wire will work. And what we're doing is we're just putting this around that same dowel, cutting it so it's even. And now we've got a nice, fairly decent circle. Now I've got a piece of acetate. If you've got a piece of plastic packaging, like one of those clamshells from like the deli or the bakery or something, those work really well too. I didn't have one, but I have a tablet of acetate. This is not completely round, so there. Make it a little bit more, hopefully, round. Let's see if we can put it back on our handle and get it. There we go, maybe. Kind of dink around with it, kind of play around with it, get it right where you want it. Ah, I've got it a little too long. Okay, that's why it's not looking round. There. It's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. Now I have some E6000. Oh, and by the way, I put washi tape on the edge of my plastic. That way I can find it on my work surface and I don't spend a ridiculous amounts of time trying to find the clear plastic on my work surface. Now I'm going to try and put some of this on here without getting too much excess. And I hate the way this stuff smells, but it works. And now that will need to dry. And it takes it a while to dry, but once it's dry, I'll come back and we will do some trimming. All right, so this glue has all dried overnight, and we are going to do some trimming, and we're going to put some feet on our 
slow cooker and a handle on the top of this and then later we will uh, put them together. So we are going to start by trimming this out. This way, we, by doing it this way, we don't need to have a hole punch that's the right size. Just cut around it very carefully. This way it's custom fit. And I find it helps to have a smaller pair of scissors. This is one, or if you've got a, a smaller pair like this, it works so much easier. Now, I've got my emery board here. And you can be as picky as you want to be about this step. Now, I want to find the center of this, or not the center, the four points. And I want to make sure I have the lay. This is my back seam here. So I want to have, let's see, I need to make a small mark where my back seam is. Because I want to put a position for, I want to put my legs. It's going to go there. So that's where the back, the seam where the paper met is going to be the back of our slow cooker because we don't want to see that. Now I've got this circle template and it happens to have the quadrant marks. So I am going to put this on here and about an inch is going to be, and you can do this any way you want. If you've got a better way to mark, I find that when I try to, um, draw lines with a ruler, especially on camera, I tend to have issues. I don't always get my lines marked where I want them. So now I have this pretty well evenly spaced. And I have some little beads here. These came from this package. I bought it at Walmart many years ago. I will try to have a picture of this on the blog post. Uh, I love those little beads. They are so handy to have around. I've got my E6000, which I'm going to use for this. Remember, E6000 smells horrible, but it holds plastic really well. I'm going to take a toothpick, and I'm hoping to put a drop of glue at each of those points. And if this doesn't work, then I'll dip the beads into it. But I'm going to start this way. Try and get these in equally spaced from the edge of the, of the base here and on those little pencil lines I made. You can put yours on however you want. That's the thing about crafting. If you've got a way that works better than what I'm showing that works better for you, do that. Uh, crafting is very individual. There's no right or wrong. Um, now I'm going to try it. Okay, that was a mistake. Let's see if my spaghetti will pick this up. I really don't want to stick my fingers. No, it's not. Okay, do it with my fingers. If I had my trusty old tweezers I used to have, those were so nice for this, but I lost them when I moved. And I haven't found a good pair yet. All right. I put extra out so that in case I did lose some. Off camera, I'm going to straighten these all up. All right, one more. Now, uh, off camera, I'll get those all nice and straight. Let's work on the lid now. also and this one is not as and it it's okay if it's a little off because it's not really going to show as much be fine now I did draw a circle here so that I can find the center now we're going to glue the the plastic side of this is the top the ring side the wire side is the bottom and the plastic side is the top and I'm going to put a dab of glue right in the center. I did this ahead of time so that I wouldn't have to find the center for you live on camera. Okay, I'm going to take off to the side, one more of these beads, and 
this glue all needs to dry now before we go on to the next step. So I'm going to make sure those beads are set straight and I will be back when the glue dries. All right, hopefully my glue has set up enough that I won't knock anything apart. So we're going to glue the lid onto the slow cooker now. To do that, I'm going to put out more E6000 since we are working with the, the wire and the plastic. We're going to use E6000 today. And what I'm going to do is run a nice, pretty generous bead of E6000 around this top. Try not to get it on the outside. If it's going to run, let it run down the inside. And that's why I'm not putting it on directly from the tube. I'm using the toothpick because I have a little more control. Now, I just did this not that long ago, so my glue on my beads is not totally set up. So I'm going to have to be very careful I don't knock anything loose. Now, at this point, you need to make sure you know where the back of your slow cooker is. And mine is right here. And I am going to line up the seam in that wire that's going around the lid. And there we go. So there, that's what it looks like so far. I'm going to set this aside to dry for a while. And when that's dry, we'll come back and we'll put some more features on. All right, we are going to add some details to our, to our slow cooker. What I have, I have punched a piece of uh, cardstock. It's just, I punched it literally out of the same paper I cut the base from. I used just a standard hole, just one of these little standard hole punches. I like that behind the knob, the knob, the control knob for our slow cooker is going to be the same beads that I used for the feet and for the lid on the top, or the handle on the lid. And then I have some toothpick that I painted white and I'm going to glue onto the side for handles. And, and then I'll touch up the ends of those with um, some paint after they're glued in place. So let's get just a little tacky glue. And let's put it right, trying to decide where the middle is. I guess it's, hopefully that'll be all right. That out. You could add details in the way of controls or whatever. And then I'm going to I pre-painted the sides of this toothpick just so it would be a little easier and then I'll just do the end like I said once it's in place. I'm trying to get it rolled over so I've got that spot that I missed. Eh, guess not. Okay, I can touch it up. And you could put as many or as few details on yours as you see fit. It's all up to you. Off camera, I'll make sure I've got these across from each other. Oh, come on. There we go. I will make sure off camera that those are level. I don't think they are. I'll deal with that later. Now I'm going to put some E6000 in the middle of this. And I'm going to put my bead right on there. There. Now off camera, like I said, I'm going to get those all straightened up and put in the, make sure they are put where exactly where I want them and I'll get some pictures. When this is dry, we will make a, in fact, I'll just put this aside and we can get in a uh, plug-in cord, electrical cord made for it, so I'll be right back. All right, we are starting out with a piece of embroidery floss. It's just white embroidery floss, which this is six strands. This, I pulled out two strands together to use for my cord, and I've made it extra long because I'm going to want some past where I'm working. Then right here, I don't know if it's picking up on the camera, there's a little tiny seed bead there. It's from this package here. It says special seed beads. They've been in my stash for a very, very long time. 
And I don't think I'd ever opened them because I just made a horrific mess all over my table opening that up. So I am coating part of this with glue, but I'm not going all the way down. Now the fun part, if I can get this on here. May need to wait till this glue dries to thread it through here. Yeah, we're going to wait until this glue is a little bit more dry. And then when it is, I'll come back and we will finish this, do another couple of steps on this. All right, I successfully threaded this bead on here. I decided to do that off camera rather than on. Now I'm feeling down to where my I'm going to pull this apart at the end because I want to have two strands. Let's see, that'll be far enough. We can trim this to size when we get ready to use it. Let's get this untangled. There. Now, I'm going to get more glue out and I'm going to put glue right here where I've got these threads separated. And there is a reason for this. When we get to the end of this project, you'll see why. I'm going to run that right down on that glue, and I'm going to leave these, leave this like this for now until that has time to have the glue dry. When that glue is dry, we'll come back and we'll do another step on our cord. All right, that glue has dried. It only took literally like two or three minutes. So that's how little glue we have there. And I've got some of this brushed metal, whoops, brushed metal in silver. And I've got a small brush. I'm going to put just a dab of this out on my tray. And we are going to very carefully paint this embroidery floss where it's not glued together. We're going to paint it past where we need it. I'm trying my best to keep you under camera, but whoops, and I'm off. Okay. Make sure I've got it painted all the way around, right up to my little bead, which is our, this is our plug. Now, separate that out just a little bit. There. Now that paint will need a couple of seconds to dry, probably four or five minutes, and that will be dry enough that we can work with our electric cord. Oops, I got some silver on my cord. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and I'll be right back. All right, we're going to cut this off pretty short. Probably right about there. So we just have two little tiny silver pieces, and I'm not even sure the camera's focusing on that. And then you decide how long you want your electric cord. I don't want it really long, but I do like to have this so it's available. That way if I decide I want to have it sitting, you know, on the counter in the dollhouse kitchen with the cord laying out, I can. Now I've got that mark. I'll show you here in just a second. Let me get some glue on here. Oops. All right, so I line the mark, the glue up with the mark that is even with that back seam. And now this glue just needs to dry. I have touched up the paint on the handle, so I'll let this glue dry, and then we'll take a look at our miniature slow cooker. All right, our glue is pretty well dry. I see I got my knob a little on the crooked side. I might fix that later off camera, but I love this. I think it turned out so cute. 
And what kitchen doesn't have a slow cooker in it, especially at this time of year? And I love having the little cord on it. You don't have to put that on, but I just, once the glue has dried, you can kind of bend this around, like around a pencil or whatever, and kind of have the cord there so it, it just adds a little reality. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's project. If you did, hit the like button, leave me a comment. Uh, if you haven't found us over on Facebook or the blog, be sure and check both those places out. I'm, the, more pictures on the blog post and Facebook is usually the quickest way to get a hold of me. If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, I encourage you to push that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so YouTube can let you know when I put up a new video. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.